strap was on. Oh, the that's fine. Yeah. It didn't break. Oh my. But it leaked all Get the rid of those fucking things. Yeah, that's cool. I have, I have the top of everything in the bed. Nice. I have all the little I don't know which one. So what's wrong with this one? The deck wouldn't go. So something's not right I with got the deck. It it's got it's a little area. prettier this deck than my deck. It it ran. It drove. It's still got the boots on the transmission. Mine doesn't. I bought boots for mine. I'm going to try to get one, whichever one is in a little bit nicer shape that I can just, you know, get going and sell. That's sort of my plan. If I have to part the other one to do it. Different tires, too, I think. This, this tire, one. That tire don't hold. Yeah, well, it's got dirt in it, probably, and who knows. I'll put my uh, stop leak in it. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Get a closer look at it in a little bit. Hey fellas, I figured we would work on a couple of these. Not really a how-to, just like let's hang out and figure out what's going on. There's a, there's, I know there's a big spider in there. Oh, spider! You know, so this is another one that Mikey gave me. We'll get a closer look at it. I'm going to pull it out tomorrow. And, you know, because, what is this, like a beer holder? That's cool. Yeah, that's a keeper. I want to try to clean up a little bit more you know fall is almost here like it's like right around the corner like of the block and I'm trying to clean up and this other one that's a relatively new purchase we'll take a look at uh, I don't even think you can see it even if I turn this light on yeah it's a mess in here this one is on the channel already there's two videos it's been around for years we'll get it out I promise All right tomorrow I'm starting to clean up a little bit in here, and I'm cleaning up in the shop, and tomorrow we'll dig them out and we'll take a look and see what we can do with them. So, shop's getting a little cleaner. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow for sure. Now, I know a lot of you guys think these snappers are just the bomb. They're a bomb, all right. Now, it's kind of cold today, but I got everything outside in the yard in the back section and the sun will be coming around and hopefully it'll be a little warmer because I'm fragile like that. I don't want to be too cold. So I'm going to get them all kind of cleaned up and rinsed off. And, and this way, I mean, this like the big spider we got to get rid of. So let's go do that and get everything kind of cleaned up. Plus, I got another machine I got to take care of as well for another project coming to you guys soon. So stay tuned. We'll get this stuff cleaned up, show you a little bit about that, and we'll take a better look at it, both of them. We'll get that big tunnel spider out of there. And I'll drop the deck down later, and I'll, we'll pull this off so we can get in there as well. And we'll put it up on its butt, too. i got to put air in this tire. So this passenger side tire has been leaking like a sieve, so we got to get to that. But the others seem like they're okay. Well, I told you I'd find him. I got him. All right, he was in the intake tube. All right, we're just going to start off with a little bit of super clean, fellas. I'm just going to just coat everything once and leave it sit, and uh, I'm going to go work on the machine itself. But just a light coat. Everything's been rinsed once. That's how I like to do it. And uh, we'll finish up the machine in a little bit. All right, fellas, not too bad. I gave it its first rinse. We're going to put some super clean on in a minute. And, of course, I fired up my Mr. Leanne's pressure washer, and I'm using the orange nozzle. Right, I don't need too much pressure right now, uh, which is great because we got those. These are all clean and rinsed, and I killed that spider. So I'm going to let that dry. We'll bring it in a little bit, and I'm going to get started on the application. With everything rinsed, it allows me to kind of get it diluted a little bit. Now, over here by the motor, I think we're going to do also do a little bit of acid, but before we do that, we're going to put this on, and then I'm going to use, you can't see in there, I know. It's got a new carburetor on it, but I'm going to use the foamy on the engine. The rest of it's in pretty good shape, so I don't think we're going to be needing too much of an application. Um, with this off, I kicked out all of the dirt and junk that was in there, so that looks good. And we'll get to the underneath, the underneath. This, 
this paint's a little faded. But the deck looks good. 28 inch high back. Here comes the wind. Up, oh, double weed. Dum dum double weed. Is it gonna go? Is it gonna go? It was rolling before. All right, fellas, we're gonna put on the applicator to increase the bow of cleaning. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of this on. Leave it sit. Wow, it puts a lot on quick. Look at that, it used, it used almost all of that stuff right away. That's one thing I like about this. You can store these this way. If you have a gel cell, it's not a problem. I would disconnect the battery. If you have a, uh, a wet cell, then you have to take the battery out. And if you got a bad, uh, I'll show you the gasket, but if you got a bad dipstick gasket, then you'll have to replace that because it will leak. I am just going to, this all looks pretty good in here. I'm just going to put a little super clean on it and give it a wash. All right, get these cleaned up a little bit more. And they look pretty good in here. Um, we'll take the blade off and everything we'll do with the deck later. Spider! Dumb, dumb, double weed. Here it goes, double weed. that seat's loaded with water we're gonna let that drip but I'll probably take it off and then leave it outside on a nice day that's bad it was leaking fuel while I had it up and that's what I found in there let me see if I can get the rest of it out that's no good all right here's a quick look at the two of them so the one on the left is was mine for quite some time and it runs it did a carburetor on it it's there's two videos up on YouTube for that and the one on the right is the one we're gonna take a look at now and really there's almost no difference between these um, just it's very small in terms of the chassis design they carry these chassis forever uh, let's get up a little close and we'll take a, a little closer look now that it's clean now dating them can be difficult uh, the model number is on the tube but the best way to date I think is by looking at the engine and the engine code so this one like I said it runs and we'll, we'll try and date them a little bit later. Now you look at this, the older Synchro Balance 10 horsepower Briggs. And Briggs is pretty easy uh, to date. And you can see I've got this thing cleaned up. It's got a newer carburetor in it. Um, and it runs well. It doesn't have the battery in it. And I think we might be able to start it even without the battery. I don't think I've even tried. Um, but we'll try that in a little bit. I think it has some gas in it. We'll turn the petcock on and maybe we'll run her up this one's easy to push um, it does need uh, some transmission service it needs boots on the axles and it needs some deck work but it's not too bad uh, this one over here as you can see it really is the same thing with every lever is the same there's really very little difference it's hard to push this is the motor on it. it's a bigger engine overhead valve Mikey said he put a new carburetor on it. Certainly looks like it's new, but that gas was kind of beat, so we may want to drain the tank uh, and maybe clean it out, or and or maybe we'll just drain the bowl of the carburetor because that gas that came out didn't look too bad. Um, this doesn't look terrible, so it's got that flat tire issue. I think we're going to deal with that first. 28-inch high vac deck. Let's turn it on, right? Let's turn this on. We got some fuel flowing, and then we're going to turn it to choke. That's turtle, rabbit, and choke. Let's check oil because I I know I, it might have been leaking, but I think I sealed it up. If you turn, yeah, it needs some oil, but we're just going to run it quick. Now, if you turn it on its back, this seal can leak. I did put some RTV on it. And uh, I don't think it was leaking when I had it up before, but we're, we're going to check that again. If not, you can order a new one of those seals, some Briggs or whatever. Something we're going to want to check on the other one. 
right, fellas, I put a battery in. Now, if you order the correct battery, the post will be over here. But we're just going to use what I have. I put a little oil in it. Yeah, she's, she's wet. I'm going to clean that off and dry it out. Get it all nice and clean. And then we're going to blow out the combustion chamber with compressed air. I decided to change the plug to something a little bit newer. Um, this is a used plug, but it's in beautiful shape. And I noticed the electrode on the other one looked like it was worn. You could see the tip of the electrode was not sharp. It had a rounded edge. Fill that warm up for a bit. Now, one of the other differences, the older machines, they ran Carlisle tires. This is a Kenda. And actually, that's actually a four-ply. I might actually want these tires, so um, I can take them off. They're in okay shape, except for the one that's leaking. We've got to figure out why that is. So that's a 16 by 6.5 by 8, running at 28 PSI. Um, but it is a Kenda. It's Chinese. Um, that's the same size... Uh, as the Carlisles, uh, but they run at the Carlisles run at 12 psi. So you you actually have some. I think this is like a slightly lower like profile. Um, I don't know if the you know it's 16, so it sh it is pretty much the same, but they seem taller on the older one, and again lower pressure. This is a higher pressure tire. The fronts. Let's see, if we can get a better look at it. Again, this is all kinda. And the fronts are 11 by 4.0 dash 4 four ply, so they're actually quite nice as well. And they run at 30 psi as opposed to um, I think it's 24 psi for the old ones. And the old ones, I don't really get a size on that, I just get 4.10. Um, I have 4 nh, I'm not sure what the difference is, I'm gonna go check that out. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. So you can see it's basically the same tire. This is just the, the older um, Carlisle style. And I, I think these are two-ply. Um, they don't really give the other... Yeah, it's two-ply rating. Uh, nice tire. They're all in good shape. These are just older. And that's what the older Turf Saver style looks like. They're all in pretty good shape. We might just put these on the other snapper and just solve that problem for now. I may have some footage of it. I don't remember. But when I cleaned this up originally, I think there was like a blue belt boot on here or a yellow or something. But they just disintegrated. They just literally disintegrated. And this, this isn't, I don't think this is right. Something's, I think that part of the friction system that's in there is, uh, is blown out. may want a belt too, but that can be replaced at any time. I'm going to take all this out, right, to put those boots on. This side, everything's got to slide out of the way. you got to take it all apart. That's the one bad thing about these. So, all right, these are the boots, actual Briggs boots. And you should be able to read that. If not, I'll just yell it out. It's a 70751155YP boot axle. Um, and these are the original ones because like I said the like anything aftermarket it seems like I, I mean I just I saw it happen it fell apart and I, I've heard of other people say that that that's what happens they fall apart whereas those will last a very long time and then this is the seal I don't remember where I got this the only number I see on here guys is a 05-8665 
suppose you could try stands or something. I probably where I got it from. I don't remember. But that is for the older one, and I can't wait to get to it. It's going to be quite a bit of work, but hopefully that helps you guys out a little. Let's do flying. Runs well. All right, a couple of last things, fellas. Now, the blade is off. I have a nice a blade that I did. I went over this blade a while back. You can see it's dirty, but I went over it. I sharpened it. I checked the balance on it. Seems to be good. Um, but I just want to show you a couple of things. Let me put this down. Now, you want to check the bearing in here. You want to move it back and forth and then grab the spindle from the other side see if you can move it now when the belt is on it might be a little bit more difficult but and if you want you can take the belt off we'll get into that on the other machine or when we do this machine i'll do it again but uh you can tell a lot of times like if this bearing is no good you'll hear it and also when you go like this it, it'll be like almost like it wants to come apart now you can put a little bit of oil or chain wax in there shoot it in there let it do its thing, get everything cleaned off nice, and that'll help the seal that's in there. It'll just provide a little bit of additional lubrication. I don't think there's any uh, way to lubricate it. We'll, we'll get it a little bit closer. There's a couple of lubrication points down below. I just want to show you uh, a couple of more things down below. Those are nice little machines. This would be good for this yard. No smoke running perfect I just want to I want to show you guys I want to get rid of that filter wrong filter and I'll show you we'll talk about that in a bit What does number six do? that goes real fast but that'll make it run lean it doesn't have a fuel pump so we need to get rid of that filter let's put a disc one in those red discs see that's a good speed I'm going back all right <laughs> things wear pretty seriously in here and some of the older machines and, and like I said we will get in closer but we want to be able to grab the tire and just spin it a little bit and watch observe the movement if you see a lot of slop um, then you're going to want to look to find out where that is and the other thing we do and this is the same scenario very often with cars is we take it and we try to rotate the tire not rotate uh, uh, sort of it's a good word to twist or push the tire you know like this so we're looking for any kind of it's like almost no movement I can feel it it's a tiny amount we'll do the same thing to the other side it's a very small amount um, I'm looking in here this plate down here I'm looking to see if there's any excessive wear we will get closer look at that later but just to give you an overview so that's one of the things we're looking for um, on the other side so let's repeat the process yeah, I feel like nothing. This thing's in really good shape. Um, we're also looking to see what the condition of this plate is here. That's the skid plate. Um, if there's any cracking on this here. So there's just a few things we're going to be looking for. The belt's in decent shape. And remember, I washed it, so they could, you know, you sometimes if you can't, if you're not careful with the pressure washer, you don't, you can damage the belt. You don't want to do that. Everything seems to be in very good working order. We're going to need to take this apart, and that's when we're going to get a little bit closer. Um, there are places to grease. There is a grease fitting here, and it it can be accessed from uh, the outside, but really it's accessed over here. Um, it's accessed on this side. This side uh, gets greased by the grease or fluid that's in, in this chain um, assembly, right? It's a drive assembly. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to put a little bit of... Um, a very thick weight gear lube in there right because that grease gets dry but it's that grease and you put the little oil in there and some grease in there and that will lubricate this bearing that bearing will probably stay good if you don't see any leakage I will show you a picture of um, the seal that goes there I do have one just in case I have some actual boots for this here Briggs boots and we're gonna lubricate that and we're gonna lubricate everything in here we now know it works this was all stuck so I actually did put a bit of lubrication in there when last I was playing around with it. We have a problem here. I see right now, I see what's happening is, is the wires are getting hit by uh, the cable, um, the belt here on this side. That's obviously a problem. So 
It didn't wear all the way through. The outer protector kind of caught it. We're going to need to deal with that. Um, and that's what we'll be looking for. All right, we're going to call this one done for now. All right, guys, we'll be back. All right, fellas, so we ran it out of gas. We had a little fun with it, and we got it running again. So it's got a gas, got some decent oil in it. I can put it away. We're going to pull the battery. This is what I keep referring to, um, probably in my own light. But this can cause air pockets. It's, it's really... We want to get rid of that. We're going to replace that with this the standard disc style, red disc. Um, this can crop up at a bad time. Um, it's just it's one of those things where it's kind of taboo. If there's a fuel pump on it, you can use it, but I'm going to take that out, right? It doesn't seem to be causing any issues, but I think that was why it was hard starting. Um, not enough fuel was able to get into the bowl, and there you go. That would cause it. That was close. All right, we'll be back. Okay, fellas, so far so good. We've dug out the machines. I got the other one it running. Last year we got it running real good. I replaced a carburetor on it. That's an aftermarket carburetor. So I just want to remind you guys if you want to check out um, those the two videos. Um, it was stored for 10 years. So the first video was it was stored for 10 years. I got it. It's kind of kept. Mikey says it was like some kind of basement. I, I don't know, right? But you can see it, it's in very good shape overall. Um, so we took it to the next step. I got a carburetor for it. I had a lot of problems with the carburetor that was in there. It was no good. Uh, so that's the second episode. And in the third episode will be this one. Um, there'll be another episode when I go to do the boots and take care of the other issues with it and get it all cleaned up nice. Uh, so that'll probably be like one of the last episodes on that, depending on how long it takes, because that's a big job. Uh, that's it for this one. We are going to this guy next, right? The newer one, somewhat newer one. We're going to go into that a little bit more in depth. Uh, so stay tuned for that. That will be another episode entirely, just all to itself. We got it cleaned off, and we're going to establish a baseline on this and figure out what it is we have. We have a, pr a pretty good look at it overall right now. And... Uh, so we'll cover those bases when we get to it. This is coming up uh, probably very soon. Not sure when I'm going to release it. I will see you guys on the next one. And I look forward to doing this machine uh, within about a day. i got to fix my air compressor first. It keeps throwing a belt. So I ordered a belt, and I got, I got a, I'm got. i waiting for it to come. And Because everything in here is like air. Like I, I still use a lot of that. I'll see you guys later.